Okay, welcome to this video where we're going to make snooker or billiards. I don't really know what billiards is um, in JavaScript using the P5 library. So here's a diagram which I prepared earlier, and I'm going to imagine we're going to make something like this. So we are going to have some side bits. That's the technical term. Side bits, billiard balls or snooker balls that can hit off the side bits, and then pockets, pockets. Um, let's make some more pockets. So we can we can put these wherever we like, wherever we wish. We could even do something like um, not that. <laughs> we could do something like we could put a pocket in the middle. You know, if everything works, we could do things like this. Maybe does that look like billiards? I don't know. So. We want lots of objects, so we're going to use object oriented programming and we're going to inherit some uh, properties and functionality between these objects. So if you're interested in learning object oriented programming using the ES6 standard, that's what you'll be able to learn. I'll teach you some bad habits and sloppy things uh, to do with that. So let's get going. Let's ah, first design. How do you organize your object oriented programming? Uh, which object or class is going to inherit from the others. Well, one way to think about it is what is your most basic object? What is the stupidest object that you're dealing with? And make that your kind of your parent class that the other classes where they have fancier things going on, they inherit the basic stuff from them and then they do extra things. So maybe the most basic thing is the is the side because it doesn't move, they don't move. And the pocket, yeah it I was going to say it doesn't have any collision detection, but I guess it does because we have to know when a billiard ball or a snooker ball collides, so to speak, with its area and then it makes the, the ball disappear or go off to a magical land underneath the snooker table. So that's quite complicated. So let's stick with the ledge, uh, the edge, le the ledgy edge, which we'll make first. So I've cheated. I've got something ready. There we go. I've got my canvas kind of sorted. So P5 library will have set up and a draw. The draw is a draw loop. We create a canvas of whatever size you like. I've just gone for a, an old school 640 by 480. And then your color uh, of the canvas, red, green, blue. So this should look like a kind of a pleasant blue, some kind of azure or teal, something like that. There we go. Lovely. Snooker script 1.0. We're off the ground. Um, so what I've also do done is create a new file to be nice and tidy to create um, our object. So how do you do this? To make a new class of object, you use the keyword class. I'm just going to check the time. Time check. OK, I'll call it about the hour. I want to only go 15 minutes. And then if we need more time, I'll make a new video. So class, this is going to be, what was it, the side? We call it the edge. Uh, class edge and then use curly brackets to create the body of your object. So we're almost there. We've almost made an object. And then we need a constructor function. So all classes, all objects will have a constructor function. You don't have to write function. JavaScript will know what you're talking about. Notice it's got parentheses after it, like all functions will do. And in here is when, when you instantiate or make a new object, you'll pass in some some parameters, some arguments, and they go in here. So for instance, we're going to have an X, um, a Y, what else will it need? It's kind of, it's rotation, I guess. And now will it be better to rotate or just, <laughs> let's not rotate, let's just say it's got a, a height and a, and a width. So we call it um, width first, X first, and then, um, H. Okay. Um, right. So then we use this dot. This might be familiar if you've made um, objects in the old style. So this, um, I'm going to use a vector for its position. So in P5, you write create vector. And this is just like another variable, but it stores two variables inside of it. Um, you can have three, an X, Y, and a Z, and they'll be called automatically uh, position dot x dot y dot z for the for the components of the vector. So we only want two components. We're going to make it out of the x that you passed in, the x position and the y position. So that's the position done. And then we want this width 
equals um, the W, and then this Hig, <laughs> that's terrible, um, for height. Actually, height spelled like that, we'll call it, oh, I'll stick with Hig, Wid and Hig. Actually, I'll call it Hid. No, <laughs> I don't know what to call it, Hid, I'll call it Hid, um, is the H. Okay, so we've got a, so now we can call an edge, we can make an edge, and we can give it either like a long height or a long width as we need. Right, and then of course we just need a render function. How do you make a function, um, a method for this class? You just write its name, you don't have to write function again. It's parentheses, taking any arguments, and then curly brackets again. So notice this is a lot cleaner and simpler than the traditional way. ES6, a lot cleaner. So render, we want it to be a rectangle and we also want it to be, let's stick to my diagram. I think I had them white with kind of, well, it's kind of a gray blue with thick, with thick black lines. So fill, we'll just go for white, 255. Okay, 250, twist my arm, 250. And stroke wants to be black, that's the line color. And then how thick the lines are, default will be one. So let's make them about four, okay? And I haven't written weight, stroke weight. Okay, um, now we want a rectangle, and this will take, this is a P5 function for drawing rectangles onto the canvas. It will take an XY position, so that's going to be our this.pos, dot X, this.pos, dot Y, let's write that, this dot X, no, <laughs> this dot pos dot X, this dot pos dot Y. So we, we're just extracting the X and the Y from the, the vector, and then it takes the diameter, so the whole width and the whole height. So we just say this dot uh, width, yep, this dot hid. <laughs> I'm going to forget that. Right, that's it. We can now draw, we should be able to draw, let's save this file, go back to our main page. So we're just drawing a background at the moment. Let's just see if we can draw, I'll put it in the draw loop. Um, well, we need to call it something. Let's call it top edge. Top edge um, is a variable. <laughs> variable, top edge. So top edge equals, now, how do you get our object? How do we get him? How do we make a new edge? You write new. That tells JavaScript to go and make an object, go and find that, that object's class definition. So um, top edge equals a new edge. Look at that, it's come up. Oh. <laughs> edge and then it even tells me x y w and h so i can kind of guess what i need so it's positions it's going to be near the top of the screen let's just say zero i don't need i can just say uh, i don't know 64 uh no that's i'm thinking of height sorry so we'll say uh let's say 100 um 64 and then we'll say maybe width times 0.75, so three quarters of the length of the screen that you've got, just in case we change this. Width, by the way, is a P5 keyword that will just store whatever canvas size you've made, so it has a height as well. And we'll say the, the height of our edge will be something like 32, something like that. Okay. Uh, so we should have a new top edge. We should have a new edge. And then we need to draw it. Um, so we refer to top edge. So that's the actual object that's been made. Edge is just an idea, just a class of object. It has to be instantiated and stored in a variable. So we've, caught, we've, we've got our variable, top edge. And now we should be able to refer to or call our render function. Let's run it. How are we doing for time? Three minutes in. Just over three minutes, I kind of cheated. Wow, that's worked straight away, straight away. We've got something going. Okay, it's not beautifully aligned. We can work about that, uh, work out that eight uh, later on. Um, so now let's, while we're here, let's make loads of these. Uh, bottom edge, just call that bot edge. Bot edge, new edge. 
So x and y position want to be different. I'm going to say the height, that's the bottom of the screen, bottom of the screen, um, or the canvas rather, minus 64. So it's going to be the same distance away that our top edge is from the top. Um, and it wants to be the same length and the same height. So there we go. So top edge render. Now we need bottom edge render. And we're just we're just running it again just to make sure this has worked. Okay, beautiful. This is the beauty of objects and object oriented programming. You make one idea of an object and then you can make lots of them very quickly. Okay. That's kind of all a all a all an edge needs to do. Collision detection. We'll have to um, work out when we maybe when we get to the um, billiard ball, the snooker ball itself. So let's okay. Let's make two more of these. Now I'm making quite a few of them, so I'm tempted to put these into a an array now. Shall I do that? No. Let's just hard code them at the moment. Okay, there are advantages and disadvantages, um, none of which I know, so <laughs> I'm not going to explain them. Um, let's go left edge, right, so we've got to think here. Um, where does it, oh no, now, now we have to do some kind of math, <laughs> damn it. So we started at a hundred across minus um, half of this. <laughs> Does that make sense? A hundred across so this wants to be 100, <laughs> no, that's the x position, that's the length, yeah, because our, um... oh, wait a minute, I'm drawing from the centre of these, I want to draw them, no, I want to draw them from the centre, and I'm drawing them from the top left, in P5, Rect mode, rector, rect mode is by default top left, meaning that whenever it draws a rectangle using the rect function, it will draw it from its top left corner outward. But when we come to collision detection, it will be easier to think of this rectangle in terms of its position being its very center. So now, <laughs> after getting excited, everything looking good, um, let's just see that change. Okay, now, <laughs> that looks more like um, something I would make, something um, in the wrong position. So we want to shift the the centre position over here. That's where that wants to be. Oh, in fact, it's going to be middle of the screen, isn't it? That's so obvious. So we want the X position to be the middle of the screen. So width divided by 2. Width divided by 2. And we want the left edge to be width divided by 2. That's from the center minus half its width so minus and that's its width so that whole thing divided by two there we go um, that should go first that should go first okay I think the bold mass will work there let's just see if we've oh I haven't changed its width so its width now wants to be 32 and its length wants to be, sorry, its height wants to be the width of the screen, time, uh, well, three quarters the width of the screen. So it's the same. So we're going to make a, a kind of a box, a snooker box, or a billiard box. Um, what have I forgotten? I've forgotten to render our left edge. Now, there's an example of a con of hard coding things like this. If we had a for loop um, and we're just looping through an array or iterating over an array, that would every time you add something new, push some new object to the array, it would have been rendered. Um, but if you're hard coding, you have to remember to do everything manually. So anyway, left edge. How we do for time? Okay, eight minutes past. Left edge, it'd be nice to get one billiard ball. Um, left edge render. Um, while we're down here, this is dangerous. Let's get right edge before I've even done it. Right, right edge. Okay, so right edge is going to be very similar. 
right edge. Um, but we just have to shift the x position. I think I've done that. So the x position of the left was minus. Okay. <laughs> Not bad. Ah, I've forgotten to do the y position. So that's the second parameter of our left and right edges. So that's the gorgeous first parameter. The second parameter is height minus 64. Height minus 64. Um, so I've copied, th so that's the same as the bottom edge. It wants to be between the the top and bottom edges Y, so 64. Um, <laughs> what is that? Um, it depends on the height. Oh, God. Oh, easy. <laughs> it's half of the height. Man, oh, destroying any credibility. There we go. Or making you feel warm inside that you're not the only one who can't do logical maths. There we go. Um, will this work? Kind of. 